Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. This is the first of several fountain pen resurrection videos that I hope to post over the next number of Sundays. Resurrection means bringing something back from the dead. The first few pens I'll showcase over the next couple of Sundays will not have actually been clinically dead. Bring out your dead. I'm not dead. He says he's not dead. Yes, he is. I'm not. They just needed a little TLC to get them back into pristine working order. I have, however, acquired a number of really very dead pens that might not make the return journey across the River Styx. No matter. The fun will be in the journey. And I plan on sharing some of the research I've done on the particular vintage pen with you. So if you're bored by history, Go to church instead of hanging around eating cheesies and watching YouTube all day. But let's get started with the first vintage pen that has come back into the world of the living. My new, old 1967 Parker 45 Insignia, right now. Today's Fountain Pen Resurrection is a 1967 Parker 45 Insignia. And what I'd like to do today is to look at some of the history of this pen, show some before restoration photos and video, talk about the restoration process, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. First, a little bit of history. The Parker 45 is one of the longest running models of fountain pen in Parker's history. It was introduced in 1960 and was made until 2007, a whopping 47 years. It was designed by Parker's Don Doman, who had designed the Parker 61, 75, VP, and Jotter, and was based on a design from the newly acquired Eversharp Pen Company, the Eversharp 10,000. It was initially supposed to be a budget pen or school pen. The Parker 45 was named after the Colt 45 revolver since it too used cartridges. Ink cartridges were the next great thing in fountain pens in the early 60s. The Parker 45 was an immediate hit and Parker decided to do the reverse of what they usually did. Instead of introducing an expensive model and then introducing a cheaper version like they did with the Parker 51, following it with the less expensive Parker 21. This time Parker introduced a less expensive school pen in the 45, and then due to its popularity, decided to create upscale versions of the same pen. In 1964, Parker introduced a flighter version of the Parker 45. It was the same Parker 45, just clad in all steel. The all gold clad version introduced the next year was called the Insignia and came with black tassies like this one or gold tassies or no tassie at all. Many different finishes followed with the introduction of the Parker 45 Deluxe model, some having satin aluminum finishes and many different colors. The model was discontinued as I said in 2007. I've got three versions of the Parker 45 here. Here is the Parker 45 with a 14 karat gold nib and gold filled cap. This came as a set with a pencil and this model was called the Parker 45 Custom and is in my possession but doesn't really belong to me. This belonged to my friend Ron's dad Dennis and now belongs to him but in my safekeeping. And I just picked up this one the other day. This one is a special version made in England in 1968 and called the Parker 45 Flighter Special. I haven't tried to clean or resurrect this pen yet. The all gold Parker 45 with the black tassie and section and the 14 karat gold nib is an insignia and they were introduced around 1965 and lasted until 1969. That's why I'm splitting the difference and calling this a 1967 Parker 45 insignia. Most of this historical information has been learned from Tony Fisher's magnificent web pages parkerpens.net. You'll find the link in the description below. It's an absolute treasure trove of detailed information about everything Parker. And here is a video of what this pen looked like when I found it at a local antique shop and did an unboxing video. This is a gold filled Parker 45 
in really really good shape and here's the tag on it again this is the name of the seller here Parker fountain pen gold plate 36 bucks Canadian the Parker clip I figured this was a 45 when I first saw it and there of course is the 45 and that nib I have no idea whether it's gold or it is steel it doesn't look like if it's gold it has any gold left on it but it certainly looks like steel and a lot of dried ink so this is going to take some some work as well some cleaning and this has been sitting around for a long long time it came with a dried up cartridge that i've since taken out the parker 45 is one of the most beautifully balanced and comfortable writing pens that Parker ever made but I know how to take that apart so we're going to see about renovating restoring this pen and see what it might look like uh, after I worked on it for a bit something to look forward to I'm going to disassemble a 45 for you to show you how beautifully designed and engineered the Parker 45 is and how I cleaned it up to get it working again you saw from my unboxing video how corroded the nib was and stained with ink it came with this dried up Parker cartridge and this is one of the more remarkable things about the Parker 45 Parker introduced the world to cartridge filled fountain pens in 1960 and since then the Parker cartridge and the cartridge converters have remained the same Parker standard so I can go to Staples today and get some Parker ink cartridges and put them in this 55 year old fountain pen now I've had this pen inked and I've been writing with it for the last couple of weeks but I've been using a pen BBS converter since they are exactly the same throat size as a Parker cartridge and I'm going to use this Parker 45 to show how to disassemble it because it's already cleaned out of ink you can remove the barrel remove the cartridge and the front section of the Parker 45 is divided into the nib the nib holder and the section and all you have to do is twist this front nib section and it comes right off then you end up with just the feed this collar and the nib and this little collar you just push it back like that and the nib just falls right off the section ends up just being a hollow tube none of that messy ink collector stuff and once the nib is off you can see the markings on it 14k Parker and made in the USA and that's dead simple to clean just rinse that out and once I had that nib off all I did was put it on top of my trusty jewelers polishing cloth put my finger on the back of the nib like that and just give it a polish just like that and you can see it comes up gleaming like it's brand new putting it back together again is just as simple you just put the nib on the top of the feed and it sits right there in its little notch and you push that hood back over it like that my fingerprints off it and screw it back into the section and it's just that quick and easy when I took it apart I soaked the nib the feed and the section overnight in my homemade pen flush which is just nine parts distilled water and one part liquid ammonia with a couple of drops of dish washing soap well, I can't say that fast not dishwasher detergent just plain dish washing soap like Dawn or Joy then I rinse the parts out put them again into the pen flush solution in my ultrasonic cleaner to get rid of the old caked on ink then I cleaned the parts and went at the nib with my jewelers cloth and that nib came up so bright that now I'm curious does this 45 I just got have a gold nib as well it was so tarnished I rinsed it a little bit and it's starting to look gold but let's find out I haven't even soaked this yet so it's still probably full of ink yeah it is Let's see if I can pull this apart there we go so that's still all caked with ink and it says it says Parker 14k there we go 585 
made in England. So it's slightly different than the other, but it is 14 karat gold. So I'm going to see about cleaning this one up and maybe this one will be in another video. And there you go. A gold nib Parker 45 flighter for 20 bucks. So the outside of this pen required some serious cleaning as well. And again, I used my jeweler's cloth and a lot of elbow grease to polish that cap and barrel until it was gleaming. And this black plastic uh, tassie on the end of the barrel looked a bit odd when I first got it. And there was a little bit of a gap in there. And so I tried to turn it like it, I know that's a screw piece that goes in there. I thought maybe uh, it needed just to be tightened, but it snapped off in my hand, as you can see here. Um, and that just wasn't me breaking it. That was because it was already broken. Someone had glued it back together again with crazy glue and not done a very good job of it. So I sanded off both ends uh, until they were very, very flush and then glued it back properly myself. Once I had the gold cap and barrel gleaming, I applied a light coat of conservator's wax and buffed it a lot. The wax gives it a nice shine, but it also keeps it from attracting fingerprints. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the 1967 Parker 45 Insignia with a 1954 Parker 51, a 1931 Parker Duofold, a 1937 Parker Challenger and a 1970 Parker 17 and one of the nice features about the Parker 45 insignia and maybe why it's called the insignia it has a little plain gold section right here rectangle where you can engrave your initials or whatever the rest has got these converging stripes on it and now let's look at them posted and here they are posted the 31 dual fold that nib is not seated all the way in there uh, as I'm cleaning it and I don't want to push that uh, ebonite feed all the way back into the section yet as I'm not finished uh, restoring this pen. These two pens I have not touched yet but that's a 14 karat gold nib right there. That one's 14 karat gold as well and the Parker 17 is steel. Now let's look at them unposted and here they are unposted. Of course this is a cartridge converter cartridge pen. This is an aerometric filler. This is a button filler so is this one. And this is another aerometric in the 17. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the video. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Nineteen sixty seven Parker forty five, and it has a fine fourteen karat gold nib. The grade of the nib is not anywhere on the pen, but from the way the pen writes, I'm guessing it's a fine. Let's check the wetness. It's a very dry pen and the ink is my very favorite blue, Hiroshizuku Kanpeki. Now there are those that say that you shouldn't use anything other than like Waterman Serenity Blue uh, in a vintage pen uh, for fear of damaging the pen. but. This is a Parker 45. It takes cartridges and it takes cartridge converters. So there is no ink sac there to destroy. So I'm not worried about using any ink in this Parker 45. And the nib is very, very smooth. There is a little bit of line variation you can get out of the nib, uh, but it's not a flex by any stretch. So there's no pressure. There's a little bit of pressure just like that and the line this nib makes is 0.5 millimeters which puts it bang square in the middle being a western fine 
or a Japanese fine to medium and the pen is just so comfortable to write with this could easily be an everyday carry pen and for our quote and for some reverse writing very dry not scratchy at all but it does do it and some quick writing no issues whatsoever nice fast pen and now for my thoughts on this pen the Parker 45 was in continuous production for 47 years that speaks to the pen's design and quality as much as it does to its popularity with writers for almost half a century it also means there are hundreds of thousands of Parker 45s in all of its various incarnations and finishes out there in the world right now to be collected because there's so many of them they are not as prized by collectors as say the Parker 51 is but I don't think of this pen as a collector's item I think of it as an incredible writer it is extremely comfortable well balanced in the hand especially the metal clad versions of the pen that have a little bit more heft to them and the simplicity and elegance of this pen's look and function is really remarkable it comes apart in seconds and is so simple to clean and maintain because there are so many of them the prices are very reasonable for vintage pens this one with the 14 karat gold nib and the gold filled cap and barrel cost me $36 Canadian that's just 28 bucks US folks and you saw how grimy and awful it was when I bought it I wasn't even sure the nib was gold but it is and that gold just comes up sparkling in all its luster and glory with just a little bit of elbow grease and there you have it please join me next week on pen resurrection Sunday when I'll be showing you this gorgeous 1950s Schaefer signature snorkel with a gorgeous 14 karat gold triumph nib if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and please look in the description for a link to Goldspot pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store and when you shop at Goldspot using my link you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you you can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis badges and sneak peek unboxing videos as well and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote this.